welcome to Bros International, the English speaking show here on Bros. It's great to have you with us for this latest edition. We're first, we're off to shrimps. The idea of shrimps comes from two years ago when I met Isham. Isham is a French guy from um, Island Mauritian Island uh, origins. I was working in the service part and he was working in the, in the kitchen part. And so when we met each other, I asked him, what do you want to do later on? And he told me, I want to open a restaurant. Thought about the prawns, and the prawns is something that everybody likes. On est parti sur une base de riz et de pâtes, et avec des gambas ou à la plancha, nature, justement saisie et bien craquante, ou en panko, ça veut dire une petite friture avec une belle petite chapelure qui est très, très gourmande. Tout ça fait maison et fait avec amour et dans les règles de l'art. We were working both together on different types of sauce, different types of things, creating something different but really nice and really tasty. On est dans une cuisine un peu du monde. Ça veut dire on va partir dans l'Inde, on va avoir du garam masala, du curry, du lait de coco. On va partir dans le français, la bisque, de l'ail, des oignons, l'asiatique. On va partir dans, sur le feuille de kumbawa, sur plusieurs choses qu'on ne retrouve pas forcément dans les restaurants qu'on va vous servir. Next, in this report, we get to know Enico. He's a painter who originally comes from Spain, but is based here in Brussels and likes painting former EU Parliament presidents. The portrait is no different to anything else figurative. What I mean is that the story that I tell at the end of the day when I paint a portrait is the story of the light falling on a three-dimensional object, which is the human face. And the paradox of this phenomenon is that when I do that, the person seems to appear like more profoundly, even if I don't try to do any psychology or, or I, I don't try to go deep into the person, I just try to describe what I see and forget about what I know. Well, right now I am involved with a project with the European Parliament. I am painting the portraits, the presidential portraits of ex-presidents of the Parliament. The last one I am painting is Enrique Baron Crespo, uh, who was uh, president, I think, in the 90s. A prominent one was Simon Weil, who was uh, the first elected president of the European Parliament and the first female as well. Portrait, it's actually, it's, it's a genre that has like quite a strict limits. You have to work inside quite strict conventions. One of the most important conventions is the likeness. You really have to get the likeness, resemblance. And the only way to achieve that is with extremely careful observation of what is going on in terms of light, how it's interacting with this uh, three-dimensional surface. So you really have to uh, observe very, very, very carefully with infinite patience. I spend an awful lot of time looking at the painting and taking decisions. Almost like half of the time, or more than half of the time probably, I spent sitting on this chair, uh, looking at the, at the painting and deciding what to do and what things are, and memorizing. I do kind of a to-do list. After that, it's just uh, execution. This is all about, this is all the secret, is that you have to forget about what you know and you have to focus on what you see. So you have to forget, like if you are painting the nose, you have to forget this is a nose. It's just a click that the brain needs to do. It, it has to stop interpreting and it has to just observe because all the information is there. It's relatively, relatively simple and easy actually. I think the, the th what it makes it work is not in the hands. This is like the, the misconception. It's not in the hands at all. It's all about seeing and not even with the eyes. It's seeing, seeing uh, with your brain. Interpretation. It's interpretation. It's interpreting in a different way. 
So most of the time you are, you are actually, when you paint, and that's why it's tiring, it's tiring, you are actually fighting, fighting the interference of what you know. Uh, you are blocking constantly, and it's tiring ha having to block that. Also did this painting for the Federal Parliament of uh, Belgium for the president at the time, Mr. Herman de Croo. And it's one of my favorite paintings because I had the opportunity to, to think about where it would be hanged. So I painted for specifically for the conditions that it had around, which is a very classic environment. So that's why I did a very classic uh, composition, which is a profile. This portrait will uh, last much longer than us. People don't tend to throw them, so they stay there for centuries. Especially when you paint with oils, which there's a magic, mystical thing that happening that is, whoever you paint with oils, it's, it acquires this kind of dignitas. It's an interesting thing. We give a lot of importance in, in our culture, in, in the Western culture, to portraits. That's interesting, I wonder why. Next, in this report, we get to know Giacomo, who, after many years of traveling, fell in love with doing yoga in water. I'm from Venice, in the northeast of Italy, and I grew up here in Brussels. And after moving a lot for many years, I came back a few years ago, settled again, and now I work as a yoga teacher and a Watsu practitioner. A few years ago, I had to undergo a surgical operation for my spine. And after that, I was really limited in the movement. And I searched for all forms of uh, treatments and therapies and forms of moving. And when I discovered water through Watsu and water dance, it was a real revelation for me. I had the idea to combine the water element, which makes the body lighter and makes it easier to move in a fluid, safe way with what was my main practice, which was yoga on the mat. And so practicing yoga in the water allows you to experience your body in a different way. I met Alice during my yoga teacher training and we discovered we had a passion both for yoga and for water as well. And so we started working on the idea of offering classes both on the mat and in the water. So we started from the dragon dance flow, which is a practice that comes from yin yoga originally, but with yang elements as well. And so it's a nice combination of uh, gentler and very dynamic moves as well. And so she led a class on the mat, and then I led the one in the pool. Both on the mat and in the pool, we mostly work around vinyasa yoga, so a dynamic form of yoga in which we move following our own breath from one posture to the other. But the water element changes the way we approach movement and stability in particular. In the future, we will be organizing many more workshops like this one. I'm planning to organize regular sessions in Au Bord de l'eau, in Nucle, which is this pool that was specifically built for treatments in warm water. And then on the side, we will also occasionally organize weekends or weekly retreats in different places. We have already identified a place in Italy that we like very much and where we plan to organize a whole week of experiencing yoga aqua, both on the mat and in warm water. And finally, in this report, we meet Alexandra. She comes from Poland and has a passion for photography. My name is Alexandra Rowicka. I'm uh, Polish. I came to Brussels uh, to work in Hewlett Packard a long time ago in 99. I work right now at the commission, but I introduced myself as a photographer with a day job. I bought a camera because uh, we wanted to go uh, on vacation together with my daughter. 
And it, of course, that the pictures I have taken were very nice. And uh, one day I decided to go and shoot a fashion show and uh, then uh, donated my photos to the various uh, fashion designers. And this is how it started. I also fell in love with the street photography, so combined the fashion shoot, portrait shooting with street photography, and uh, well, here I am. Street photography is uh, sometimes considered controversial, so uh, many people have doubts if this is uh, okay or not. Honestly, in my life, I've never ever had any unpleasant situation, rather to the contrary, and it's very rewarding. For fashion photography, I, I shoot uh, in the studio, sometimes in the street, uh, to have natural, nice uh, light and to portray people in a natural habitat, uh, not in front of the studio lights. And uh, these are the photos that they will use later on for their professional careers. As an art director at uh, Brussels Art Group, I have uh, decided to first publish uh, the book about my beloved street photography and uh, include their works of Belgian street photographers as well as uh, others. It's a worldwide project. And uh, then the next uh, book was about human body. It's called Human Bodies Art. Now, uh, third book is on the way, uh, and it's about nature. Being a photographer here, I realized uh, how uh, sometimes difficult it is to uh, promote your works. And uh, I'm very lucky being in a place like Brussels, where people really help each other, they cooperate. It's not that difficult like in other places to find the exhibition space. However, having a book uh, in your hands is uh, something special. In the future, I plan to publish around uh, four to five uh, albums a year and uh, also promote uh, these in uh, expos and exhibitions here in Brussels. Well, that's it for this edition of Bros International. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care and see you soon here on Bros.